I got Netflix years ago, and first it was, first they took away everything on Discovery Channel. I call that the Great Discovery Channel purge of 2013. I'm still upset about it. They took away Survivor Man. They took away, uh, shoot, River Monsters. They took away Mythbusters. And I was like, you know, I can deal with it. They've got a bunch of other good shows. They recently took away House. They took away 30 Rock, which now that I don't have 30 Rock, I don't even know why I have the service anymore because all it is is Netflix originals. I had to buy House on DVD. So hey. what you're saying is you're tired of companies ripping the media out from under you? Yeah, so now I'm paying for the service I'm not even using. And you're also paying a dollar more than you used to. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that went through. Right. So you've, the problem that you've, what you've done here is you've put the control of your media in the hands of the evil corporations. I have. And I, and I regret it. And I think it's time that you and everybody out there did something about it. <laughs> and I think you can be the champion of the masses and show them how to take control of their media again. And then you'll never go through the Discovery Channel purge of 2013 <laughs> ever again. So building your home server is really exciting. I'm excited for you because the home server is sort of a gateway drug. I mean, I know you're not like super into like all the crazy stuff, but once you've got a media server and you see what all it does, it'll lead to other things. Well, I'm excited to have it because I have a lot of photos and crap that I need to back up anyway. And I had been thinking about getting like an external hard drive or something for it, but I just haven't pulled the trigger on it. And this is probably right around the right, right time to do it anyway, right after Christmas. And, and we get a lot of people who are not like you. They are sort of in the opposite situation where they're like, Hey, I got a server. Tell me what to do with what it. What do I do with it? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, why did you get a server? I, I understand. You know, you, you want to play with it. Media server, for all the reasons we just listed, you want to create your own media library that you're going to keep forever and set it up for your own use. Now, some of the things we didn't talk about is if you're a cord cutter and your parents visit, what do you, how do you entertain them? <laughs> right? They, oh, it's such a struggle to get them to understand how to use Netflix. They don't understand. The TV. Now, something like Plex, it's got a nice little interface. You can sort of recreate Netflix for them. And if we're gonna go down that road, then you get into like, hey, virtual machine for your guests and stuff like that. This video, we're just gonna talk about media servers, but we might build on it in the future. Well, just the media server possibilities because the next version will probably do some test drives of not just Plex Media Server, but also Unraid and some other Linux distributions, different things that you might be able to build. But uh, yeah, this first video is just the hardware possibilities. Now, some people might want a low power device that doesn't make a lot of noise. It's like, oh, yeah. server, that's gonna be like loud and noise and, and draw grinding. Draw the power and then raise your electric bill and all <laughs> kinds of problems. You could do this on a Raspberry Pi, although it's not gonna be transcoding any 4K video or anything like that, but hook up an external hard drive and serve media, you could do that on Raspberry Pi. It would work. So let's talk about setting up your media server and prepping it so that you can start to rip all your own media, plus set it up for normie use when people visit. So you guys have sold me on the idea of a home server for all my storage solution needs, but where do we get started? I don't know where to go. Well, you're not gonna buy anything. But. I mean, You're, wouldn't you need some sort of components though? I mean, because well, I don't have a whole lot. So for the audience, they might have to do a little legwork and find something, find a, a place to get some junk server, but you're in luck. You just have to go to the basement. Yeah, I don't really want to go to the basement. That's, you have to go to the basement. I, I, don't, I don't want to though. But that's where it is. Mm. We don't Can one of you guys help me carry it up? So we've acquired our server. And now I want to talk about testing it. Testing your used hardware is so important because you never know, I mean, maybe it overheats, maybe it does something weird. You're gonna need a bootable diagnostic CD and it's gonna vary from hardware to hardware, maybe to manufacture OEM diagnostics. Run testing on your hardware, make sure the memory is good and all the hardware is good. Yeah, make sure you give it a stress test for the heat. Now after that, you think about hard drives. Only after that, because you don't wanna run out and buy new hard drives and find out that your server's not good. Or that they don't work with them. I mean, some older servers only work with drives up to two terabytes. The uh, used hardware is great to experiment with, not just on the hardware side, but also the software side as well. Now, when you're talking about what hardware to get, something like a Raspberry Pi, that'll do 1080 video. 
But that's all it'll do. Yeah, I mean, you can yeah. you can network a hard drive with a Raspberry Pi, but music in 1080p, and it's just because it is a file server. It's not gonna do virtual machines or transcoding or any of that fancy stuff. So in the age of 4K, you probably wanna get something a little more decent than that. And that's another reason that used hardware is so good. You can get a great used server for like 50 bucks. It uses a little bit more power and it, and it runs a little bit hotter, so the fans are louder. But if you can stick it under the floor in a basement or something like that, uh, they run pretty good. I mean, it's a good it's a good value. So once you've checked all those boxes, you've tested your hardware, you've got your hard drives, you make sure they work and everything's ready to go, then we can think about putting software on it. And, and the software gonna, is going to be so much fun. That's going to be our next step. Hey. I got the server yeah. from the basement. We're, we're filming. You know we're filming. You're making a ton of noise. Oh, here. I got the server though. Yeah, all right. Good <sighs> job. We can get started now. Let's get started. So you've been to the basement. You had your adventure in the basement. You came back alive. And, you, and you've brought an artifact. Barely. And uh, so it's, uh, we got two, a dual CPU, Xeon X5650. And it looks like it's pretty complete. Yeah, 72 gigabytes of RAM, like there's just tons of RAM in this. Yeah. Uh, our two RAID controllers, our 10 terabytes of hard drives, uh, our fans, and lots of uh, other people's dust yeah. in this too, because it did come from the basement. It's used, but... Uh, other people's skin, OPS. Ugh. So we got lucky and had a pretty complete system here for our uh, media server. You might not get that lucky, but this is pretty much ready to go. Now we should mention, we're probably going to use ZFS. So we might not run these hard drives through the RAID controller. We might run them directly because ZFS will perform better with that. But they're there if we need them, which we don't. So I think it's time to see if this thing will boot. UID, oh, that's that one. Ah. Wow. Oh, I can feel the dust. Yeah, well, earlier we turned it on like to test and it just, boom. I don't know if anyone can even hear what we're doing right now, because it's just. Yeah, probably not. We should have subtitles over this part like, while we're talking. <laughs> uh, now, if you're new to servers, this is normal. This is the boot sequence. It will calm down in a moment. Some servers, as long as you have the top off, they will always run like this, but not this one. Now, we don't know anything about this server's health. We do now, but we did when we started. So we have all of this RAM. This is a lot of RAM. A lot of bad things could happen. And we have hard drives from every different kind of vendor that there is in this thing. They, none of them match. Yeah. So what we did is we used our ultimate boot CD. That's not it's a CD, a, though. It's a, it's a compact disc. Well, it's what's called ultimate boot CD that we burned to a USB. And we tested our memory and we stress tested our hard drives overnight. You really got to punish these garbage dumpster PCs to make sure that they're going to do what you want them to do. This one does. We're satisfied with it. We're ready to go. And now we have our free NAS installer. So this is the software part, correct? This is what we're going to use as our uh, file server to serve our media. Okay. Where, where do we start? Tell me what to do. Well, we're going to install. Okay. So 5.5 terabytes. We know we have more than that. So this is already configured. Has another RAID set up. And this is not what we want because, again, we don't want to use these controllers. We're going to have to set this up for ZFS. So we're going to have to go back and reset all that. So go ahead and reboot. So we need to get rid of the logical drive that's already there. So go ahead and delete that logical drive. Yep. Okay, that's fine. We don't F3. care. F3. Press enter to continue. Okay. Now we want to create one, correct? Uh, I think there might have been a second one. Go Can back I to the view. Go to the delete again. Okay, there no. No. okay. Okay, good. And now we'll create one. All right, let's create one. And then enter to create a logical drive. You select a logical drive with a total date pass on terabyte. RAID zero fault tolerance. Press F8, save the configuration. Is that fine? Yep. Cool. Oh, I hit F6 because I'm dumb. All right, enter. All right, so what does that do exactly? So we don't want to use these drives together as a RAID. 
We actually want them individual. All to be separate. So what you're doing is you're deleting the old setup, which yeah. is using them together, and you're creating them individually as logical drives. Okay. So we have four physical hard drives. Now we have four logical hard drives as well. What does that mean? That means it's treating them individually. Instead of as a unit. It's treating them as snowflakes. Instead rather of than a, as a cohesive Lumping role. them together. So in theory, could you put like one thing on this and then back it up on the different one? Yes, if we were going to use the RAID controllers, but we're not. Okay. I that's just wanted to know. Now what I need to do. Uh, you want to go ahead and uh, reboot again. We've made a terrible mistake. Uh... We need to install FreeNAS on a drive that isn't going to be used for storage. As you can see here, all we have are our four hard drives. And we're doing that just so we don't have to use up our valuable storage space on something that isn't really that important in the long term. That's right, but all we have is our four hard drives. So what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna use this USB. Our, our master USB again. This, uh, so go ahead, pop that in there. Install upgrade. All right, so you've got the USB in there. Go back to install upgrade and let's see if it recognized it. All right. Fantastic. Oh, it did. So we got our little 30 gigabyte USB and that's where we're gonna put FreeNAS. Okay. This will erase all partitions and data. It's nothing but MLP fanfic, so yeah, we can just let it okay, go. Okay, great. Yeah. I was, you know, I was working on a really big Silmarillion fanfic, but are you sure <laughs> you want to delete that? I've got so many backups. All oh, right. Yeah. So, you know, it's telling you enterprise hardware. I mean, this is a server. I, I don't really know enough about this machine, so BIOS is actually just the safe option. So we'll just do that. Okay, cool, complete. Now all what right. do I do? So, as if you hadn't jumped ahead, remove the boot media. That's the black one. Okay. No, nope, no, nope, that was not black. Oh. There you go. They're both kind of grayish black. And uh, go ahead and reboot system. Okay. Now you might notice this is kind of loud. It doesn't stay this loud, but even in its normal operation, it's kind of loud. Now this is your server. So you're probably not gonna put this next to your TV. This is where the media is going to come from. And hopefully you've got a server closet or something like that. But you really have to think about where you're going to put this. Because it's loud. What? We're also monitoring the wattage. Right now we're at about 232, but that's because it's on max fan. It'll settle down to like 195. Under load, you might go up a little bit from that while you're reading from the disks. So also keep in mind what this is going to cost you. Whatever electricity costs where you live. Now, of course, we use the rack mount hardware because it's cool and it was literally just in the basement and we had it. But you don't have to use it. You could use a regular CPU case. You could even use one and try to use something, that, you know, silent, fanless or something like that. So why did we use FreeNAS? Well, there's a lot of options and a lot of, uh, there's a lot of sycophants for Unraid. Okay. Primarily, we use FreeNAS because of those first four letters. Free. It's free. Unraid is not free. Oh, okay. So you're going to see some warnings here. Okay. Don't panic. It's saying that it can't get a network. And that is obvious because it's we not, have not plugged it in. Let's say it's in. not hooked up to anything. So this, when it fails to do this enough times, uh, that's going to be the end of the installation, kind of. Okay. So we've got FreeNAS running from our USB. It's set up to work with these drives and this hardware. But the rest of the setup has to be done via a web client. So we actually can't do it in from here. this machine. Okay. So what we'll have to do is actually plug a network into this thing and then move to another computer to set it up. So what we're doing now is we're going to do the web GUI setup okay. to finish out our FreeNAS installation. Uh, we actually have not done anything with the drives yet other than delete the yeah. partitions and everything. So uh, you're gonna log in, you set the password so you type that in. Root is your username. And we're Sweet. In. Now you can just click that wizard button. We will do the it's, easy way. Just as a side note, wizard button, that's clearly a magician's hat. Don't judge. You don't know how those wizards identify. Next, we'll choose our language, English, volume name. Uh, it's up to you. Something simple. I'll just call it media server. Name it Tide Pod. Oh yeah, Tide Pod. Okay, Tide Pod. And uh, so we got some choices here about what kind of RAID we want. Yes. Now they're they're easily labeled. Media. That's Media, what we want. Yeah. Now of course this is all about uh, how much redundancy you want. 
Media is sort of a sacrifice redundancy for performance and capacity. Sounds good to us. All right. Okay. Uh, what are we going to do for the directory service now? We're just going to do the easy button solution. We're going to skip it. Oh, OK. Can we do that? What happens if we skip it? Apparently nothing. Everything just automatically works out for us. OK. Share name. Uh, it's, again, we can make that up, whatever we want. OK. Uh, we're going to, can I just call it Tide Pod? Does it hurt if it's the sure. same? Sure. So purpose, I assume probably Windows, but. Well, ultimately, for the media server part of this, we're probably going to use Plex. So SMB will work. SMB okay. works with pretty much everything. Okay. It's got some security issues, but we're fine with that. So did you fill out any of these other size, ownership? Can I just hit next? Uh, we, we probably don't care. We, we might want to allow guests. But we probably don't need to. Let's just okay. let's That's go, we can let's do go for security. Next. Wait, there's email and, and all these others. Do we need to change any of these settings? We're skipping that too. Okay, cool. Well, you're about to leave the initial wizard and perform all pending saved actions. Are you sure? I'm I hate to leave the wizard, but I think we're ready. We're leaving the wizard. We had to go. We had a problem when we tried to access it. And so it yeah, work. it turns out that it restarts the service, but doesn't start SMB. So go ahead and click start on boot for SMB Okay. and start now. Oh, it's... Oh, it's, it's thinking. No, I'll start. just start now, no. Okay, so it's All right, running. now let's go back to that file browser and see if we can get to it. Okay. So it turns out the wizard, you know, you can't really trust a wizard hat that's not actually a wizard hat. It didn't do anything that we <laughs> asked it to do. It turns out it really was just a magician pretending to be a wizard because it didn't set up our share. It didn't set up our user. It didn't set up permissions. We had to go back and do all that, which was annoying, but hey, you know, free. It's free, it's free. NAS. So you have to deal with some, some problems. Uh, you could Google your way out of this pretty easily. Even though we ran into a lot of problems with the wizard and some of the other things with free NAS, the reason people use it is, you know, of course, because it's free, but also because it has a ton of plugins, which make it a lot more user friendly, including one that we'll probably be doing another video on soon called Plex. The important thing to remember is you now have control of all of your media. You can hoard your media and always have it and not worry about Amazon or Disney deleting it someday. The great Netflix purge of 2013 will no longer be embedded in my heart. So now let's start legally ripping some media. 